I don't really care what you call it. I don't really care what the new buzz expression or buzzword or category it comes under. That doesn't interest me. The fact that I know it's evolving interests me a you lot. Know, of course, what artistic activity is not interdisciplinary? Even when I work solo in the studio, of course, I am torn between myself and myself. <laughs> How on earth? How on earth will I unearth anything? And then he starts playing, <coughs> playing something, and then I start moving. Seem to be a bit more complex, more there's more sensitivity, you not know, to just to read like uh, the the mis mysterious of being alive. Here. If I want to invent new terms of interdisciplinary work, maybe we have to close one year, two years, all theaters. Impacts of artificial intelligence, and nothing of that happened. <laughs> so what you describe is actually the challenge of how to find something new and how something new is not just the same with other means. Um, when I was coming here, the guy who picked me up, I, I forget his name, he was lovely, but he, he t I, I said, you know, what do you do? And he said, I'm a visual artist. And I said, what was your last project? And he's like, well, we went and recorded all this sound and then we put it into these machines, and it was, there was nothing visual in the description of his visual installation. And I was like, I, I do feel like it's, I mean, there's probably always been interdisciplinarity. Merz hanging out with Satie and do, 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 you know, all this influence. But I feel like we're in such a hybrid era now, and I'm not talking about cars, but you know, that the borders are all melting, and I see people, you know, the, I, you know, I am a <laughs> hyphen, 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 hyphen. Or young choreographers in New York calling themselves visual artists because dance is a visual art form. And just the semantics and the terminology is really getting shaken up, you know? Um, hybrid era. I don't want to get into what defining dance actually is um, because that, that will go off then on a very different track. but. I noticed in when I was thinking about that, that uh, the body is the body as it is, but it's almost impossible to look at the body without a concept to look with at the body. So I think in every discipline in dance and body work and whatever we do, we, we come from a certain approach with a certain kind of attention, and that actually already contextualizes the body in a way. and. Um, and I think that, in a way, with the body as it is, being naked and not being a verbal instrument, in a way, is in itself, for me, almost an act of interdisciplinary thinking or approach. Let's see. I think you have to, in order to stay inspired, I mean, we all want to stay inspired. And, and past a certain point, that becomes the, the problem. It's not the love of it. It's the inspiration to love it. So at various times in my life, I had to change up the, the tools that I used on my own body. You know, I'd go to Afro-Haitian class. And I would do jazz classes. I'd go to like a lot of yoga just to keep the inspiration going. How could I see the body in a different way and then relate it to, to my classes? How could I see how other people were perceiving their own bodies if it was in another language that they heard? I mean, another language, not as in foreign country, but if they came from another discipline. So if we want to work in, with interdisciplinarity, we cannot work with anything that we have or share. We have to work with something that is foreign to both of us so that his investment cannot have cannot be uh, um, comparatively related to mine in respect of a certain kind of affordance in investment, but it, and yet I cannot be precious about what it is that we have in front of us so that his idea in respect of that can be, a, so that we can, in a way, interdisciplinarity needs to start with the paradoxical word innocence. For the modern work, a naked workshop, I was researching and I was reading that uh, for example, Ruth St. Dennis and all the expressive dancers, 
they also had the idea that philosophy and philosophers were their teachers because they didn't have teachers already for their dance. So they searched their teachers in philosophers. For example, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, Back to Nature. So this was an interesting new idea for me, that my desire or my wish to relate to things has something to do with um, all these women and men of expressive dance in the beginning of the 20th century already. If I really like stay into the experience of movement, it does keep changing. And I don't really care what you call it. I don't really care what the new buzz expression or buzzword or category it comes under. That doesn't interest me. The fact that I know it's evolving interests me a lot. But like, let someone else categorize it. Like, you know, you, and the decision-making process in between, which of the um, infinite, uh, possibili infinite possibilities I have in moving, which will I use and which in a specific moment. And what interests me, especially at the moment, is improvisation. Mm -hmm. Because if you really are good in improvising, you surprise yourself. Now, what is it in the very same brain which decides which movement and which is it which is an observer, under quote an observer, because it's too much observing, then it won't work. But uh, which part can be s surprised? And there are very interesting works now going on which show the connectome, the, the long distance relations in the brain between different parts. And it seems to be that there are separations possible. So there can be perhaps two kinds of consciousness, or there can be one conscious part which is observing and other parts who are acting, but making decisions. Because if you are improvising, you have to make decisions. Of course, what artistic activity is not interdisciplinary? Even when I work solo in the studio, of course, I am torn between myself and myself. <laughs> it's a terrible work. So, uh, but so on the one sa side, there is always relationship. There is, they are always frictional. It is always a pleasure and a pain in the ass to deal with them. But from there on, to when we start to speak about interdisciplinarity, that's another story. The same artist, the same artist and, and expression outside that frame. And the same audience, but we not even have an eye to look. So everything, we are very much conditioned in the lecture to do. No, we are only now, we are inside the box, okay, now it's time, we change clothes, let's dance, make contact, improvisation, can touch each other, that's the code. And so for me, that's also something I, I care about. Like if you want to you know, to, to really have this uh, freedom to navigate through the box, you should connect yourself to that space, where you come from, so that you can use the box. So not like, a, not slave for the box. I'm talking about the frames I, I'm in, and I try to, to invent myself new in the frame I'm in. If I want to invent new terms of interdisciplinary work, maybe we have to close one year, two years, all theater. There is now a European Union program, which is called Flagship. They want to spend money. It's quite unclear if they have it. And one of these, uh, these big flagship proposals is Robocom, Robots as Companions. And the man who drafted it says, and in 10 years, he wants to have a robot who can learn um, dancing waltz. Now, I think I would prefer contacting Prof. or something more weird and not waltz. Uh, but um, he is a quite traditional man. It's Professor Dario from Italy. And I talked to him, but he wasn't convinced about contacting Prof. I think I'll, <laughs> I'll have to convince him because that's, and it's more difficult anyway than dancing waltz, I, at least in my opinion. 
So what you actually describe is that uh, science more and more becomes aware of a fact that the body shapes the way we think and who we are, and that they actually have to look at the body and look at was, was heißt in Grundlagenforschung auf Basic Englisch? Research. Basic research on, on what it means to be human in yeah. order to in order to actually to find that. Okay, but it's not necessary that they draw on experience on what dance has found out or the history of dance. That's not the case. Is that true? Maybe yeah. This is this is one of the effects. So what? Because it's quite difficult. What they now try to find out, and uh, I've been uh, two weeks ago at the University of Munich, where they try a robot to grab a package of milk and move it around. And so they are in a very preliminary state of uh, sensing the world, of grabbing things, of moving around. So I think what has been learned by dance is a little bit too early for them. Okay. Or maybe I'm wrong. So how long do you think science will actually discover dance? <laughs> I was so often so wrong in my <laughs> predictions. I wrote 40 years ago a book, Impacts of Artificial Intelligence, and nothing of that happened. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll never risk it again. I only make forecasts in a distance where I'm sure I'm no longer alive.